Hi, this is Gautam. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Nagaland Booklist. If you are interested in books about Nagaland or written by authors from Nagaland, you can look at the description for the playlist. For this episode, we are going to look at a short story collection, Lebanon for My Head by author Thames Love. This collection of eight short stories uh, deal with different aspects, different personalities. Possibly, you know, some are not set in the same time period. So maybe three, I would say there is a certain level of similarity because they deal with the uh, the plight of the people who are caught between the crossfire of the Indian Army and the Naga insurgents. But if you look at the other five and even the ones which are three, they have a distinct flavor. For example, uh, you hear the story of an old woman uh, who loves uh, the Lebanon flowers very much, the Lebanon tree. Uh, you know, she tries to uh, bring that into her own garden, but fortunately or unfortunately, the Lebanon doesn't grow into a tree. They don't blossom really well. So finally, she decides uh, that when she passes away on her cemetery, instead of having a headstone, she will have a Lebanon tree, the beautiful Lebanon with which has a beautiful Lebanon of flowers. So what are the measures which are taken by her uh, is one story. And there is a story regarding the hunter, you know, since he's one of the important, not important, the leading hunter in the area, you know, he's requested quite strongly by the forest authorities to kill an elephant, which is rampaging the agricultural fields and is really causing concerns to people. He does, he does kill the elephant. He does not have any serious issues with that. But once he kills the elephant, then the psychological change which happens uh, happens within the hunter and you know he does go on to hunting after that but at one point of time why does he you know decide to simply give it away and how the event affects uh, you know his future you know that is discussed in one story and this instance of crossfire between the Indian army and the insurgency in Nagaland you have stories uh, through uh, three different themes for example you hear this you you hear that theme explored with uh, with the eyes of a wife uh, wife of a panchayat head, you know, not exactly a panchayat head, one of the leaders, one of the one of the local leaders of the uh, government authority who has to deal with the, uh, you know, you know, deal with the administration there. You also see it uh, through the eyes of the villagers as a group and at the same time through the eyes of love, uh, a woman who really grieves uh, the loss of her loved one, even though they are not strictly in a relationship, they were in a relationship in the past and how he gets, uh, he he gets killed by the insurgents themselves because there are so many Naga groups which operate, you know, calling themselves as the true fighters for the, for the Naga land. My favorite of all the stories is one called Three Women, in which you have the story narrated through the eyes of women of three different generations. You have the daughter, you have the mother, and then you have the uh, grandmother. So, you know, the, the, you know, the plot point is simple and straightforward. The daughter realizes at one point of time that she is not naturally born to her mother, that she was adopted. And then from the mother's perspective, we try to understand why did she go for adoption. And then from the grandmother's perspective, uh, we understand that she actually has had a direct and both an indirect impact to the sequence of events which leads to the adoption of her grandchild. So that was a very interesting thing because when you read the story through three different perspectives, you know the you know the story gets evolved further and gets it gets even more complete because with more age you have more years of past to explore. So that was uh, you know that was the short short story which I liked the most. But nevertheless, all of them are good, and uh, it, this should definitely be there on your book list if you're reading about Nagaland because this is not just about you know the you know a, surrounding the insurgency alone but rather it is about people who live there and uh, their lives and aspirations so that's it for today's review and uh, i know that the author's booklet has been lagging but you know due to work commitments they have to travel quite soon but anyway i will make sure that i finish you know kazuo ishiguro's second and third work and then uh, possibly start with haruki murakami so that's it for now meet you with the next video soon